Hi everyone, it's Mike with the Astro Explorers here again. And tonight, as you can probably see, we've got our trusty Celestron 8SC here, along with our laptop. And as promised in the last video, I was going to show you how to hook up your Canon or your Nikon, uh, whatever DSLR you have, to your computer. So for that, what I've done is I went ahead and ran that USB cord over uh, from the telescope to the computer like we did previously. And then I have a second USB cord running from the camera to my computer as well. I don't know what kind of USB cord your camera is currently using, so I would just make sure that you have one appropriate. Uh, generally, the one that you're using to download images from your DSLR to your laptop is what you're going to use. So with that in mind, if you haven't already checked out the previous video, here's a link to it. And if you're new to the series, uh, this is the series in which I show you how to go from basically nothing, just your out of the box Celestron 8SC, all the way to where I was getting images in my observatory, taking long five, 10 minute exposures, um, and just the upgrades along the way. So stay tuned. I'll show you how to use the telescope, how to use the camera, and how to integrate that with your laptop and the software that's needed for that. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a software in the description. It's called Nina. And what you'll wanna do is just take a look at the description below. Use that download link to download the current version of that software. You'll wanna use the stable version, not the nightly updates. And once you've installed that, you'll see what you, I currently am showing on the screen, and that is Nina. And Nina is what I personally use to view images through my camera. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually integrate the camera with our laptop. So as I mentioned, you'll wanna plug it in using whatever the appropriate USB cord is for your camera. Then what you'll want to do is download a piece of software. It's called Nina. Uh, that's capital N period, I period, N period, A period. Uh, so it's a nice acronym that stands for Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy. And it uh, looks like we got those planes again. So let's just give them a minute to pass on by. All right, so with that plane away, I'll keep on going. <laughs> They're always around. Uh, so with Nina, that is the main software that I use to control everything. We're not gonna get into everything that it can control right now, but if you're looking at my screen right now that I'm sharing, uh, you'll see I currently have it looking at the camera settings, but there's also filter wheels, focusers, uh, the rotator, which I don't have one, your telescope mount, the guider. Uh, there's so much that Nina can be used as a hub for and control. It's, it's really an amazing software and we'll build upon what it can do as we go through the videos. Uh, but right now we are only going to focus on the camera. We're still going to control the actual telescope with the CPWI software. If you don't remember using that, you can check it out right here. Um, so I'm gonna use that to control the telescope, get us aligned and go on target. But for everything else, we're gonna use Nina for the camera. Now you can flip through the different areas here, uh, but what we wanna focus on is of course our camera. Now, if you don't see your camera after hooking it up to your laptop, you can click the refresh button. Now it's pulling up the Canon for me. I also could select it through here. And what I'll do is I'm gonna hit the little power button and that's gonna connect us. So now we have connected the camera to our laptop. And if I click over here on imaging, this is going to be our imaging display. This is how we control a good portion of the camera. And over here on the right is where we can set our exposure times. We can do a live feed 
or we can take an image. You can also tell it to loop the image, you can tell it to save. Uh, right now I'll just do a quick one second exposure and it's going to take a picture of me. I'm sure it's going to be blurred out and you'll see that's all gone now. So with that in mind, I already have the telescope level and pointing north. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the alignment process. I'll connect it and I'm just going to go through the process of using the telescope to or the laptop to do our alignment. So go ahead check out the other video and you don't have to sit through me doing this all again right in front of you. Okay so one of the things I wanted to show is if we are well aligned I should be able to do all of the alignment through the telescope and by well aligned I mean pointing to the north and level uh, because when we use the CPWI software it's going to the target we tell it to go to. So we're hopefully on target. I'm going to go back over the Nina and I'm just going to do a quick exposure here. Let's say three seconds. And we should see some stars pop up here in just a moment. There we go. So we've got some stars and I'm actually going to go into live view and we are not picking up what we want to see. So it looks like I'm probably not quite on target like I want to be. So I'm going to get up, take a look through the red dot finder and just try to align it a little bit that way. And hopefully if I can get the first star aligned going to the next ones, I won't have to get up. But you never know. All right, so we were off. I wasn't exactly shocked, but it <laughs> just goes to show sometimes you got to get out of your seat and look at the telescope, especially when it is all hooked up to your cameras and laptops. That's just part of telescoping, um, especially before we get into plate solving. But that's going to be a step down the road. So you can see here in the image, we have our guide star here that we're wanting to get to. And I'm going to go into live view. And now we can see it here again, nice and bright. I'm going to go ahead and slew my telescope. And we can see we're going the wrong way. So I'm going to slew it. And that should get us where we want to go. And we've got this handy dandy button right here where we can work on trying to center it. So I'm going to, oh, and that's one of the problems sometimes. So we might go a little too quickly. But I'll get this over here nice and centered. And we might need to just drop our rate down a little bit. And then once we do get it centered, I'll go back over to our CP, I saw it, CPWI software and I'll click centered. So now it's going to ask, what's the next target you want to do? I'm going to go ahead and choose Regulus and say, let's go over there. Now we still have the camera on live view. And if we're doing OK on live view, it should get there. But unfortunately, again, it looks like we're still a little bit off. So what I'll do is I'll get in there with the red dot finder again and see what we can find. All right, so we were much closer this go around. Uh, we can see it in live view again. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just get us lined up real quick. And then once we have that one done, whoop. <laughs> We'll get our third star in, and again, dropping that speed will help out a lot in getting it centered. And the nice thing about doing it this way is you can actually get it lined up digitally. There we go. 
So just taking out some of that slack in the belts. There we go. And we are basically centered. I'm going to click centered. And then I'm going to go ahead and come over here. I want to try to get the Orion Nebula tonight. So we'll go and try to focus on Rigel because it'll be a very quick stop from Rigel over to the Orion Nebula here in just a minute. All right, so we just stopped on Rigel. We'll see how we're looking on Nina. And it does look like we didn't quite get it centered, unfortunately. So again, I'm just gonna take a look at our red dot site. And we are very close to this go around. Yep, see, it was just a couple clicks over to get there. Um, it's harder with our telescopes just because they do have such a long focal length. Uh, so if I had a focal reducer in right now or on the telescope in between the telescope and the camera, that would do quite a bit for us uh, just getting it, giving us that wider picture in our camera and that would help us with our alignment, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead, tell it we're centered and now I can go to any target I want to. And then we are going to go to Orion. And we can see it right here in view. So if we go off live view and we take a short image, oh, there's that plane. <laughs> All right, so you can see we have Orion here. It's a little blurry, probably because I'm on the deck moving up and down, uh, but we were able to do a good portion of our alignment here through the telescope, through the camera, and using the laptop. Uh, so that is kind of the basics of being able to do that. Depending on how well you set up your telescope, again, don't do it on the deck, <laughs> do it in the grass. I need to start doing that for these videos um, just because every time I move my body, it does slightly adjust on the deck and doesn't give me great alignments. And as you can see, it doesn't give us very good photos either. I'll just take another one, try to hold as still as possible. And now you can see we're in a much better view here. All right, so with us being able to connect everything together, it does give us the ability now to run series of images. Um, and that's where Nina comes in great. Now, before I get to that, I do wanna just point out one thing. I got a question in a previous video. How do you get your slew controls back? So. In CPWI, uh, if you do not have them, you can click on the target you're after, and then you can click on model, and then you'll get your controls back. And that can be very handy when you're in Nina if you're just trying to frame up your shot. So you can control while in live view, so I can move back over to live view, and I could control the telescope just to kind of line up the shot where I want it to be. And then when I think I have it in a good spot, I can then take a test image. And with that test image, it'll show me, do I have the framing that I want? So here in a second, it'll pop up. And the framing's not too bad. Uh, I'm gonna stick with that for now. So we have Orion right here. If I went and stacked these images, we'd get a lot more detail here. And that's just kind of what happens when you get a little bit more familiar with these objects in the night sky. 
you'll all get a good idea of how to frame them. And sometimes you spend a couple nights. You'll shoot a night, do a stack, and go, oh, I didn't quite like that, and go back to it. So if you're wanting to run that sequence, what Nina has here is our sequence. Uh, we're not going to do any targets right now. Uh, what we're going to do, well, we'll do add new target but we're not actually going to set a target. Um, most time with Nina, when you're working in it, you are controlling your mounts as well. So there's a lot of settings in here that allow you to center the object, uh, start your guiding, things along those lines. So there's a lot of drop downs in here. We're not going to worry about at the moment. But what I do want to show you is we can tell it how many images we want to take. So I'm just going to choose 30 at the moment and how long we want those images to be. Now, with this particular telescope mount, the most you'll ever probably get out of it is 30 seconds. And that is with a great alignment. I didn't do a great alignment tonight, so I'm getting a little bit of drift along with me doing it on the deck. It's causing a little bit of drift in the object. So I'm not going to get any a good 30 seconds out of it. If I try to do 30 seconds, I'll show you what happens. And I'll go ahead and not make you wait for that full 30 seconds, but I'll show you the result. And here you can see the exposure time left. So our image should be popping up here in just a moment. I went ahead and heard the click of the camera. So we should see it come through and you can notice it's a lot brighter, but one of the ways we resolve brightness or get the same amount of brightness is by stacking those images. But you can also see I'm getting that drift here. Uh, part of that's me moving on the deck, but also part of that is just the stars are moving in the night sky. And because my telescope's not perfectly aligned, it's getting some of that drift. So if I went, and did three seconds instead. We'll let it go. All done. And then it'll pop up here in just a moment. You see our image isn't as bright, but we don't have those issues with that drift. And when we stack the images, it's gonna stack the stars in place of where they are and it won't show that drift that we're getting, but we'll get the same luminosity because we've collected the same amount of volume of light particles. So that's how us as astrophotographers get past the drift and past the random comets and things along those lines or planes <laughs> that fly in the way of our telescope images. We take many, many images and we'll stack them together. So I'm going to show you how to do that collection of images. That way you can get prepared for when I show you how to stack them in the future. And if you do have questions on how to stack, I do have a video that I did previously, but I will also do one as part of the series as well. So we'll go back to our sequencer. I'm going to go ahead and just take 30 frames. We'll do um, three seconds each and then you also want to go over to your options, imaging, and you're going to want to set up a download location. So I'm just going to use the default location here. I'm going to use the default imaging pattern, telling it how I want things to be saved. And I'm just going to, we have our sequence here set up, how many images we want, the size or time length of them. We're not doing anything with anything else. We're just going to tell it to run our sequence. And it's going to ask us, hey, you don't have a telescope connected. No, we don't. That's the telescope mount. We're not using the telescope mount uh, through the software for Nina. We're just doing it through CPWI software. So we're OK with that. We'll hit OK. It's going to start imaging. You can see the exposures here ticking off. And if I come over to imaging, I can watch them update. 
So that was the first one. That's the second one. And it's just going to start going through all 30 images. And what I like to do, especially when I was first getting started, I would set these up and I would walk away because if I'm moving here next to the telescope, it's going to cause some issues as it's exposing because the deck again is wobbly and it does cause issues as they show up. Uh, didn't do it that one, which is pretty nice, but a lot of times if I start walking around or taking a look at something, it will cause some of those issues, but it does look like at the moment these are coming across pretty clean. So I'm going to let these go through and I'll show you the result that I get after it's done. All right, so our imaging sequence finished. I got my 30 of 30 images completed and I think it did pretty well. Uh, we don't see too much star trailing here. Uh, we didn't get a lot of drift. So what I want you to do is um, when you have the chance, go ahead, hook up your telescope, your camera, your laptop, and just test out your camera. Uh, it's really easy to set up your gain. I currently just had it at the default of 1600. Um, I usually run between 800 and 1600 and then play with your exposure time. Uh, you want to try to get that exposure time, especially with your DSLRs, to as long as you can get it before you get that drift showing up. So I would shoot for 10 to 15 seconds if you can. If you can push it a little bit further than that, that's even better. But the only way you're gonna know is by going out, hooking it all up, and just playing with it for a couple hours. Um, it's a lot of fun, and then once you find that sweet spot for your camera, the alignment that you got for the night, set up that sequence. Run 30 exposures or 60 exposures, or if you have the time, do 100. Uh, if you can get 100 exposures that are good quality exposures, you're gonna have a very good stacked image at the end of the night. So have some fun, play around with it, see what you can get, and then I'll go ahead and do a quick bonus video uh, after this one gets released of just stacking the images that I got and doing a real quick process on them. That way you have something to share. Uh, not that you can't share what we're getting out of these right now, but if you can get a stacked image that reduces some of the noise and gets you a little bit more of that luminosity in the image, it's a lot more fun to post. So I hope you all really enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching it. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe as usual. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I do go through those as I get a chance and try to answer those to the best of my ability. Uh, some of those questions are for future videos, so I will come and try to answer those as I can. Um, if you want to support the channel, please visit the Patreon link. Um, we will be trying to put information in there and some extras as well, along with some of the data that I release on videos for that. So again, thank you very much for watching this video, sticking it through me with me, enjoying the planes, and y'all all have a great clear night and happy star hunting.